Well, good morning. This is Rocky Romero with Peers on the Man, and it's just my pleasure to introduce to you Gary Culkins. Gary, welcome. Glad to have you here. My privilege. Thank you, Rocky. So, uh, Gary, I wonder if you might be able to share a little bit about yourself and your business. Well, I'm first of all, I'm 71 years old, although I feel like I'm 41. <laughs> Um, I've already had a 40-year career. Um, I began my first uh, FMC Link Bell, middle 15 years, consulting, Deloitte, uh, KPMG, and then Electronic Data Systems, which is now part of HP. And then up to five years ago, I was 16 years with SAS, SAS. Many don't recognize who SAS is. It's actually the world's largest privately owned software vendor um, in, with 15,000 employees. and. Um, Right now, basically, I just enjoy either doing some client work, but actually preferably training consulting firms and CPA firms how to implement what is really my expertise, which is enterprise or corporate performance management, EPM, CPM, that their acronyms, they really mean the same thing. And if I could just clarify what, what EPM and CPM is, many people are confused. Um, you know, it's not a method or a process, it's actually the integration of many methods, such as profitability reporting, not just product and service line, but all the way below the product gross profit margin line to include distribution channel selling, marketing, customer service, a P&L by customer, uh, enterprise risk management, lean management, Six Sigma, all of the process, you know, operational stuff, uh, strategy management using tra strategy map, balance scorecard, all these moving parts, they really fit together seamlessly, but very few organizations either don't know how to implement them or they're fearful that they're too complicated and not worth it. I have techniques called rapid prototyping with iterative remodeling uh, where you can actually build uh, and construct one of these methods in just a couple of days, even a few weeks, not months and years. So, so basically what my business really is, is to do knowledge transfer at this point in my my career is over it's now vocation you know I just want to make a difference and I want I want line managers uh, and executives to get much better information especially from the CFO and the accountants I'm gonna get a little critical here the accountants are in the 1960s and uh, they're so wed to all that external financial reporting but they're really underserving their managers with internal management accounting to provide insights and make better decisions well, to share a story of somebody that received uh, tremendous value by working with you what would that be well one of my favorite you know having been in consulting for many many years you know you really have probably been on a hundred projects and I tended to be on short projects I wasn't on these long one year implement a large ERP system that was actually fun but uh, Clorox um, when I was in the Bay Area that's where I was with with KPMG before I moved back to the Midwest I am a Chicago boy go Cubs go Bears go Bulls <laughs> Blackhawks um, they were having problem really understanding at one of their divisions you know where were the true profit margins where did they really make money or lose money and the CFO of Clorox back then uh, heard of this term activity-based costing, which applies pretty much in maybe 80 to 90% of organizations. It applies when you have repetitive processes. Uh, when you have one of a kind or make the order, uh, then shop costing or project accounting takes over. So the, the big victory was the division when they, this is about, if you will, much better assigning and tracing all the indirect expenses, which are very substantial at this division. Uh, rather than spreading them like butter across bread using these cost allocations like labor hours or number of units produced or sales dollars um, or square feet or headcount, none of those re reflect the unique consumption that their products and services uh, consume. What happened is they got a real wake-up call that they were really losing money on products they thought were very profitable and since it's a zero-sum error game you know and they weren't selling enough for the stuff that really was profitable so they really started to actually get ready for this adjust the sales commission structure incentive for the sales force to not only basically be based on sales volume but actually all the way to customer profitability which really then aligned the sales forces incentives with if you will the shareholders and owners 
of, of Clorox. So, and there was another aspect to that. He did, that CFO did a great thing. Everybody was fearful there's going to be two sets of books. There's going to be external reporting for statutory and regulatory, you know, like for the SEC or shareholders, and then internal. And he basically put out a, a one-page letter and said, as of today, no one will use the external reporting. Only here at corporate, we do that. You will only use this activity-based costing system for your insights and uh, making better decisions. So that was the story that I will always remember. It's a great story, and thank you for that, uh, Gary. So I'm wondering uh, if you could share who your ideal client or connection or contact with me. My interest now is really knowledge transfer, kind of a master to apprentice to other consulting firms, um, not necessarily the big boys, you know, like PwC, EY, Deloitte, KPMG, but more the mid-tier or smaller ones, um, especially the CPA firms because the audit is really becoming a, a commodity and it's going to be automated by artificial intelligence. So they need to basically shift to um, advisory service because I just really want line managers who deserve much better and more accurate information and that's a really good way for me to spread, if you will, you know, this, this message to them. I do do individual client work. Uh, I enjoyed doing that. I recently did a big project for Federal Express Ground uh, in Pittsburgh, you know, 90,000 employees. Um, but, uh, and client work is fun, but I really would like for the kind of intermediaries with the consulting firms to deliver these services that I can train them on. Most of them, when they're implementing, they don't really understand how to do it effectively, or they over design the models, they put ABC model, 3,000 activities, it's so large, they can't be maintained, they're too complicated. I know through my rep or prototype managers in the afternoon, they see what's been done, it's very engaging because it's their own company, light bulbs go on for everybody, like, oh, that's how you can do margin analysis, that's how we can validate our pricing, that's how we can figure out which processes are inefficient, so on and so forth. So, my ideal if you will, clients are really an end client, but uh, especially training others how to deliver this stuff. Kind of a kind of a trainer. I'm kind of a teacher. If you go to my website, there is a contact me. But the reason I'm drawing people to the website is in the tabs uh, across the rows. If you click on them, there are many many articles that you can download for free. Uh, you know, I've authored, you may not know, I've authored quite a few books starting with activity-based costing. And uh, so that's a way to basically, you know, download, read it, and actually maybe share it with other coworkers and have a meeting in a conference room. And, you know, you just read what Gary Cokins wrote. What did you learn? Uh, what issues and concerns? And the issues and concerns, that second question is really the more important one. And I, because most people have concerns. Oh, it'd be too complicated. Oh, everyone would have to fill out a timesheet. Oh, and all those are misconceptions. And if they send me those concerns in an email, uh, you know, I can come back and say, you know, you may be thinking that it's hard to do, but it's really not. And here's some of the reasons. One organization, professional society that I'm very involved with that I strongly recommend people listening is the Institute of Management Accountants the IMA. There are 140,000 members in 140 countries. Their, in, their website is www.imanet.org. I've been involved with them for 30 years, written a lot of papers. You could search on my name and I think there's some real value, valuable educational things. Also, if it's okay, I would just want to conclude on something, two things that really bother me option rate for these methods is really these are not necessarily technology or software uh, part of it is the perception misperception these things are too complicated but most of it is basically human nature resistance to change uh, fear of knowing the truth or other departments knowing the truth uh, not wanting to be measured not wanting to be held accountable weak leadership none of those things have anything to do with software technology or methods it's all behavioral stuff so People have really got to get better skills on change management. And I also want to make one other thing. I just think in the past, the best leaders and the best executives had the best answers. Today, I don't think that's the case. Today, I think the best leaders and best executives had the best questions. There's just too much complexity, too much volatility, too much uncertainty. 
you know, for them, those executives at the top, the C-suite, to rely on their so-called sixth sense or gut feel or, or the types of answers they made in the past that in their career that got them promoted to the top, they need to really create a culture for discovery and investigation. And that's where I didn't really talk about analytics, data science. I have quite strength. My undergraduate degree is operations research, industrial engineering from Cornell. I did my MBA at Northwestern Kellogg. Um, but they do need to create that culture for discovery, using analytics, and also tolerance for making mistakes. Um, as long as 